Over the past two decades, our collective fascination with food has elevated the adjective organic to new heights, pure, local, better. But have we let emotion overrule reason in our search for the best way to grow our food? Joining us now to consider that in Vancouver, British Columbia, Verena Zoifert, postdoctoral fellow at the University of British Columbia's Institute for Resources, Environment and Sustainability. She's also with the New Institute for Global Issues. And Verena, we welcome you to TVO tonight. How's things out on the left coast? <laughs> Rainy as always. As always. Very good. Uh, how is organic agriculture defined in our country? So organic agriculture is different from any other farming system because it is the only one that is really defined in laws. It is like very clearly defined in organic regulations. And um, in organic regulations, organic agriculture is mostly defined as a system that does not apply any chemical inputs, so it does not apply any chemical pesticides, herbicides or fertilizers. And in addition to that, it also requires some uh, like um, additional like management practices that are that go in hand with that. And also in terms of livestock um, production, in terms of animal um, raising, there is also differences. For example, um, cows are not allowed to be treated with antibiotics and things like that. And how and when did it become, you know, truly prominent in North America? So organic agriculture started out in the 1920s, 1940s in Europe, and it was developed by these organic, these first organic thinkers, by these organic pioneers as, a, um, as an alternative to the emerging industrial food system and industrial agriculture. And then it came over to North America in the 50s, 60s. And in the 1980s, when the environmental movement started to grow, the interest in organic food started to grow because people were interested in a different way of producing food and in more environmentally friendly and healthier food. And then um, about in the 2000s, um, 1990s, 2000s, because of this like rising interest in organic food, um, uh, there was a um, demand for uh, regulating organic agriculture because more producers entered the organic food system and so people wanted to have an assurance that the organic food that they were buying was produced a certain way and that's when these organic regulations were put into place. And in uh, Canada, I think, for example, the Organic Production Act was implemented in 2009, so quite recently. And um, since then, organic food has been continuing to grow and uh, more and more people are continuing to eat organic food. Um, and it's, it's still a growing food sector, growing part of the food sector. Was that a pun? It's a growing food part of the food sector? <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. OK. Uh, yeah. Tell me this. I want you to weigh in on this because there's been a, a, a great controversy over the years as to whether or not the yields that you get from organic farming are better or more bountiful than those with conventional agricultural practices. Yeah. And you actually did a study on it. You're the lead author of a study on this very issue. What did you find in that regard? So this is one of the big controversies about organic agriculture because proponents of organic agriculture say that it is, it is a more environmentally friendly farming system, while critics of organic agriculture say that it has lower yields and therefore would not be able to feed people and it would require more land to grow our food, which would then mean that we would have to deforest uh, more uh, forests and that would have a negative impact on the environment again. So this question of organic yields is very contentious and what we did is we went out and examined all the scientific literature to see what do we know about this and the response, the kind of result that we came up, uh, that we found was that organic yields are lower on average, they're about 25% lower than conventional yields but there is a, a wide range of variability in this. So there is a, a large, um, like, um, there's a lot of nuances in this response, in this difference between organic and conventional yields. So you're not um, able so to say, sorry, you're not able to say categorically that if you go organic, you're going to get a smaller yield. On average, currently, yes, but under some conditions, we can really like minimize the yield difference. And so under some conditions, organic yields can be almost as high as conventional yields. And these are, for example, when farmers apply best management practices, when we have rain-fed systems rather than irrigated systems, when we grow um, perennial crops, when we like uh, fruits, or when we grow um, legume crops like lentils or beans that are able to fix their own nitrogen. So under some conditions, the yield difference can be as low as 5%. Hmm. Now, for those who, are, uh, who prefer conventional farming, 
and who would say there are too many starving people in this world and therefore we can't afford the nicety of organic farming because we need to make as much food as possible however we do it. What's the counter argument to that? So I think there's two main counter arguments to that. On one hand, um, there's no use in like producing a lot of food and um, if we're at the same time destroying the very natural resources that this food production is based on. And that's what conventional agriculture, and that is the, what agriculture currently is doing. Because agriculture actually is one of the biggest contributors to many of our environmental problems. It is a big emitter of greenhouse gases, it is a big threat to biodiversity, it pollutes our waters. So we need to find a different way of producing food. So um, our goal should not only be to produce as much food as possible, but to also produce it at reduced environmental impact. And the second um, counter argument to that is that food security today is not only a matter of production, it's not only a matter of the quantity of food. We do have globally, at the global level, we do have enough food to feed everybody. It's a, it's a question of distribution, it's a question of access. Food prices are too high, so many of the poor people can't afford to buy that food, and um, the food production is, is not ta um, taking place in those places where it is most needed. So um, I think that um, on the one hand, this question, can organic agriculture feed the world, is a question I don't really like but is, because it is such a binary yes or no question. I think the better question to ask would be, can agri organic agriculture contribute to um, feeding the world in a more sustainable manner? And I think that's a definite yes answer. Well, Verena, that's an easier question to ask though, right? That's a, that's, that, that's a gentler question to ask than whether or yeah. not we should make a hard, fast decision one way or the other. So let me, let me nuzzle you over to the tougher question, which is, if you had your druthers, would you prefer starting tomorrow morning for breakfast that every single person in the world only ate organically produced food? I don't think that would solve all of our problems, but I think it would be better than what we're doing today. And it would be better if, if we could all do it in spite of all of the arguments we hear from the other side. Is that right? I think so, yes, because um, I think that um, it is like, I personally, for example, I buy a lot of organic food. I, I have like many um, critiques of organic agriculture and many parts of organic agriculture that I think are not really doing very well right now. But overall, I think it's still um, on average um, a more environmentally friendly um, alternative to the way that we produce food in our conventional um, farming systems. Is there one thing in particular that you think people who farm using conventional methods can learn or should learn from people who are organically farming? Yes, definitely, and that is a care for the soil. So organic agriculture, especially the way that it was defined and conceived by these organic pioneers, by these original organic thinkers in the 1920s and 1940s, was all about the soil, about um, maintaining a good soil quality in order for the crops to grow well, in order for um, the crops to be healthy, and also for your, to be able to maintain that farming system over a long time. And today, conventional agriculture, it often treats the soil as just a physical structure to, um, to allow the crops to, to, to root themselves, but it doesn't really care for the soil much anymore. And this is interesting as well, because um, I think it's, it's not necessarily um, that we, this binary distinction between conventional and organic is also not, not quite right, because we have very good conventional farmers that implement many of the organic, of these typically organically uh, managed practices and at the same time we have organic farmers that do a very poor job and actually do large-scale monoculture agriculture that reminds us more that is more similar to conventional farming hmm. and I visited a friend recently um, who has a farm uh, north of Toronto and um, in, in the area where she um, where she lives um, there is a producer of organic compost and um, um, the biggest buyers of this organic compost are conventional potato farmers because they realize that um, adding organic compost to their soils improves the soil quality and then leads to um, higher productivity and a healthier ecosystem. And so this idea that um, some of these organic principles can actually be used in conventional agriculture and can improve conventional agriculture, I think that's very important as well. Hmm, interesting, okay. Let's, uh, you know of course whenever anybody does a study, uh, half of the focus is on what the findings are, and the other half of the focus is going to be, all right, how do people interpret those findings? So you've done your study, and you've put out the information that you've shared with us here tonight. 
How did people, how did some people interpret the findings that you came to? Yeah, so that was quite a quite a tough um, kind of thing to for 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 me personally because um, I tried to like basically the key message of my paper was it depends. That's something that scientists love to say, but often it's not uh, an answer that people want to hear. And so basically because um, we said it really depends, organic yields are lower, but under some conditions they can be as close, uh, very close to conventional yields. That's why um, different people in, like used our findings to um, support whatever they uh, we're already trying to say. So, for example, my study was cited by Monsanto as um, as t uh, showing that we couldn't feed um, the world with organic methods. Well, it was also cited, used by the Soil Association in the UK, which is a big organic um, advocate to say that organic could feed the world. So it was really taken by both sides of the argument to support their point, which was not at all what we intended. We tried to say, like, um, it really depends, and there's like none of these extreme um, positions are and are correct. Why do you think organic farming seems to provoke such a strong reaction in so many people? That's a very good question. I think food in general is a very personal issue, an issue that people care about a lot. Everyone food eats every day, and every everyone goes to the grocery store and has to make these decisions about what to buy. And on the other hand, um, organic is like con people buy organic food because they um, um, hope that it is healthier, that it is more nutritious. And so it is also um, related to this personal health um, question. And so it is a very personal thing, like what you put on your plate every day. That is a very important decision. Um, and so people are very passionate about food and about organic agriculture. Sure. And, and in spite of all the controversy, how pervasive or widespread would you say organic agriculture actually is in North America today? Yeah, so that's, um, there is like two things there. On the one hand, globally, organic agriculture only makes up 1% of global agricultural land. So that's really, really tiny. That's in total niche. And of in Canada, for example, it makes only up like about 2% of retail sales. That's also tiny, tiny, tiny. On the other hand, however, um, almost every Canadian, a majority of Canadians eat organic food, buy organic food at least once every week. Um, and in addition to that, the organic market is also growing a lot. It has tripled in the last 10 years. So there is, yes, it is a niche, but it still affects um, the lives of most people and it is really expanding and continuing to grow. It's interesting, you say we, we have it at least once a week. Do you think people even know when they're having organic food? I think they do. I think people um, typically, like they, um, the reason why um, there is this like kind of um, which seems at first contradictory that it, organic produce is so little of the food market, makes up so little of the f f food market, but at the same time most people buy organic, is because people buy organic for certain items. They, for example, buy organic baby food or buy organic milk or organic vegetables, but they typically do not buy their um, flour organically or um, their processed food organically. So there is like, a, um, people go to organic foods for certain items. And just finally, in conclusion, why do you think it's so important that we get this mix of agricultural techniques truly properly figured out? Well, I think that this question of how can we feed a growing population um, in, a, in a better way is one of the key challenges are of the future. Like, we're going to f be faced with so many more people on this planet, and at the same time, people demanding uh, more meat-intensive diets, which requires more food and more land area to be used. And at the same time, we are also faced with big environmental issues like um, biodiversity is declining, um, uh, climate change is happening, and is like really like facing our societies with big issue, with big risks and problems. So I think we need to figure out a better way of, of feeding people and a better way of producing our food that is more environmentally friendly. And I think that a mix of organic and conventional, or like some of these organic ideas, can really help us um, go that direction. Well, I want to thank you for making us a lot smarter about the issue, thanks to our conversation tonight. Take good care. Thank, thanks for having me, Steve. Verena Zoifert from the University of British Columbia. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.